I think that there is something going on in the American marketplace that has to be stopped. When it comes to light, it's going to be something that makes Enron look like a tea party. Well, that, that's a pretty get... powerful thing to say. I mean, Enron was a well, you know, hundred plus billion dollar company. This is bigger. Read your own. This is Patrick Byrne. On the surface, he's the former CEO of 20 year old e-commerce furniture company, Overstock. But dig a little deeper and you'll find that Patrick Byrne may just be one of the most extraordinarily interesting CEOs that you've never heard of. He's got a black belt in Taekwondo, he's a three-time cancer survivor, has a PhD in philosophy, and a near perfect photographic memory. But just within the span of the last month, Patrick Byrne has been exiled from the board of his own company, Overstock. He sold the entirety of his $90 million stake and he's invested that money in three specific things. Gold, silver, and cryptocurrency. And now he's fled the United States for Australia, following a series of interviews where he revealed having an affair with a Russian agent involved in the ongoing Clinton and Russia investigations. Overstock CEO Patrick Byrne, uh, the founder and CEO of Overstock, who's getting into cryptocurrency in a big way through the company. But I have to ask you, Patrick, about a story that I never expected to see, uh, one that Sarah Carter wrote about, uh, a, a journalist that's familiar to our viewers. It's called A Billion Dollar CEO, that would yeah. be you, a convicted Russian agent, and the FBI. Now, the, con the, the convicted Russian agent is a woman named Maria Butina. She's now serving out her sentence uh, after she pleaded guilty in 2018. But. But uh, what's, what's the story with this? Uh, let, me, let me give it to you in a nutshell. In a very strange sure. way, by a weird fluke of history, I ended up in the center of the Russian and the Clinton investigations. What they all are, it's all about political espionage. It had nothing to do with law enforcement. I thought I was helping them in some law enforcement. It was all political espionage. Here's the bottom line. There is a deep state. Like a, like a submarine lurking just beneath the waves at periscope depth, watching our shipping lanes. And a nuclear icebreaker named the USS Bill Barr has snuck up on them and is about to ram them amidships. That's about to happen. And I think we're about to see the biggest scandal in American history. Patrick Byrne is among a small pantheon of CEOs, billionaires, and activist investors who vehemently believe that cryptocurrencies and blockchain will completely upend and revolutionize the entirety of the global financial system. And he was one of the first that foresaw the 2008 economic collapse before it happened. You know, I think that we've been living in a house of cards for about six years. I think that the American economy is like an old man in an oxygen tent that you flood with oxygen and keep him up, but you turn off the oxygen, he fades very quickly. Well, the, the cheap oxygen in our system has been cheap credit. I think house this, of cards? I think our economy is a house of cards. That's I think I guess we're looking at the, we're on the edge of a global financial meltdown, I believe. So you're expecting recession in the U.S. and you're calling it a meltdown? Yes, in fact, I think that the statistics that are coming out from the government now are, are basically half-truths. Um, we've been writing the checks on the bank account of future people. In one way or another, the Fed and the Treasury have been inflating this economy with cheap credit for about five years longer than they should have, and I think it's all going to come to a pretty ugly end. Byrne and Overstock have been the target of regulators, bankers, and Wall Street elite for years. He's even gotten into a personal feud with billionaire Mark Cuban, who shorted 20,000 shares of Overstock, calling Byrne a paranoid fool and said, if I want a company to fail, I wouldn't go to the SEC or the DOJ. I would just try to get them to hire Patrick Byrne. Before being ousted by his own company in the FBI probe allegations, Patrick Byrne's path and vision for the next few years was clear. In 2014, Patrick Byrne guided Overstock to launch Medici Ventures, a subsidiary focused on bringing the open transparency, speed, and decentralized features of the Bitcoin blockchain into everything from voting, property ownership, identity, and even capital markets. The big picture is this. For 6,000 years, humans have had this issue when we engage in consensual exchange. Can I trust you or not if you're a stranger? If I'm giving you a camel, I'm trading you for one gold coin. Well, I don't know if you've debased the gold coin or not. So there's a business model. The business model is that whoever has monopoly on violence in this area says, OK, I'll issue coins with my stamp my face on it. Anyone debases this, I kill. That's just a business model. It's a way of monetizing one's monopoly on violence. I've been in a, in a Silicon Valley company where they had on the wall 160 examples of institutions, both government and private, whose real purpose is the same business model. 
Strangers can't trust each other, so we each just trust this central institution. Well, with the blockchain, we don't need those anymore. And that's good because those institutions, we have this thousands of years of history of seeing those institutions corrupted, taken over by predators, philosophically distorted, gangstered in the different ways I've described, but we don't need them anymore. Because due to the blockchain, the, the fundamental you know, uh, value is, or the breakthrough, is the blockchain lets us exchange value for the first time without having any, needing any third party to trust. And that makes it what the internet did to publishing, I think the blockchain is going to do to those 160 other institutions across society. So I think this is the most politically revolutionary moment maybe in history, the evolution of the blockchain, because it reverses 6,000 years of the way we have solved this problem of consensual exchange. It was a proactive approach for a battle that Byrne has been fighting for nearly two decades. In 2007, Byrne, with the help of the FBI, sued half a dozen major brokers like Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs for manipulating the stock market, a multi-year case that he ended up winning with over $30 million in settlement out of court. And it's part of the reason that he funded the creation of T0, a digital stock exchange that provides the security and stock settlement of a decentralized ledger, something that couldn't be forged or manipulated like in the case of the brokers that Overstock had sued years prior. On Wall Street, when you buy 100 shares of IBM, let's say, on your E-Trade account, and I'm over on my Ameritrade account, and you, you're buying the 100 shares, you're paying, let's say, 9.95, I'm paying 9.95 to buy them, those fees we pay actually go to feed a lot of mouths. The settlement system, the system that actually lets the stock and money change hands, is much the plumbing, in other words, the back office plumbing of Wall Street. It's much more complicated and, and expensive than people understand. So the functions that a big chunk of Wall Street provides at a very high cost to society can really now be done more or less for free through the blockchain. So we have built a blockchain version of Wall Street. And that brings us to the present. On August 12th, 2019, at the time, Overstock CEO Patrick Byrne released a press statement, confirming that starting in 2015, he unwittingly assisted in what is now known as the Clinton investigation and the FBI's Russian investigation. The FBI wanted you to continue your association to get information. They never told you you needed to have a romantic relationship with somebody. Well, eventually, yes, they did. They uh, told no, they, you that you had to have a romantic that's relationship? What I'm getting, that's what I'm getting to, which is, uh, and it wasn't them. It's X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to tell you who, who they are. Uh, in March, she invited me over to Russia again, give a speech in St. Petersburg on blockchain and how it's going to change poverty and everything. And then Putin was going to come, and I had, would have 60 minutes with Putin. They told me to break up with her. And they had something else for me to do, and that something else involved corruption with a federal official. I helped them on that matter, and that also ended very... So I thought it was strange they told me not to go, go to Russia. And then they helped me and had me help them with something involving a federal you official. You know you're going to have to put names to who these people were that, in the federal government. You know that, right? Well, Hillary Clinton. Hillary no, Clinton. no, no, no. I'm saying... No, in, uh, they, in terms of who you were dealing with on the FBI side, at some point, Patrick, you're going to have to give names to reinforce uh, the credibility oh, of, of the story because it's course. pretty wild. Listen, it's yeah, we're not. You are. You haven't even heard wild yet. You think but, that so, she was set up by the Men in Black to approach uh, people in the Trump administration? Is that a possibility? It was all a hundred percent. They knew that she was trying to approach, and her instructions were to approach. To, she had to build a contact with anyone in the Hillary campaign, Rubio, Cruz, or Trump. And they knew that because she told me, and I let them know. They let uh, it all happen. I could have told you, in December of 2015, I had a suspicion forming in my mind. It was really quite strange, because she had initially checked off. She, she doesn't like, she's Democrat. She's much more of a Republican or much more of a, of a small L liberal. She's a Milton Friedman fan. I'm a mm -hmm. Milton Friedman guy. So. Um, so once she had checked off having met somebody in Clinton's circle, I don't know who, and she told she was telling me all this, she was just going to focus on Cruz, Rubio, and Trump. At that point, the interest of, in the United States government in doing anything about this went to zero. It became like this, even to the point I was telling them things like, look, she's telling me that in a matter of weeks, she's going to be at some conference. Of, of conservatives and Donald Trump is going to be taken down and out the back door of his hotel and be taken to meet her and this and that. 
what do you want me to do? Can I, uh, let me take her off for a trip and uh, whisk her away to the Bahamas? Yeah. Or what you want? And they said, no, nope, we're going to let it all happen. Well, this is extraordinarily, well, who the heck knows? This is, this is quite an ambiguous situation. But the issue is, I realized that, that uh, these orders I got came from Peter Strzok. And as I put together things, I, I, know, I, I know much more than I should know, and it's right to keep silent. Every, this country's gone nuts. And especially for the last year, when I've realized what I know, every time I see one of these things, somebody drives 600 miles to gun down 20 strangers in a mall, I guess I feel a bit responsible. The allegations plus Patrick Byrne's statements created a firestorm for Overstock, dropping the stock almost 40% in just a few days, and creating a plethora of questions about Patrick Byrne's ability to hold rank within Overstock. And within two weeks, Patrick Byrne had resigned, and even more details about the investigation began to emerge as he went public with the story. And what do you say to folks who watch this and they say, you know, he's, he's spinning a yarn? Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, I've put everything on the line. I was warned that I'm going to be destroyed by this, that all of Washington is going to try to grind me into dust. I had to eject from the company. I had to eject. I can't bring that on the company. If you want to help me, and you, I, anyway, you go buy your daughter a pillow at Overstock.com. The entirety of Washington is going to come down on me and try to destroy me. So I had to get out of the way. That's what's happened. And well, no doubt Peter, Sh Peter Strzok would watch this and say, you know, he, he's full no, of it. I, I had nothing to do with you, anything that he's talking I can't about, wait. I would imagine. He's, I can't, he won't. I can tell you, Peter Strzok, you want to see a, di a former director crap his pants? Pardon me. Go stick a, a, a uh, television camera on Peter Strzok. Or let's just say James Comey and say the name Patrick Byrne. You will see a former director of the okay. FBI crap his pants. All right. So where is Patrick Byrne now? According to him, scuba diving in Asia before shortly leaving for Australia. In his tenure at Overstock, Patrick Byrne used the company as a vehicle to fight for his personal ideologies. Corruption on Wall Street, blockchain development, even things like education reform. He continues to talk about these issues and his personal philosophies even outside his presence at Overstock, from his award-winning decade-plus-year-old blog, Deep Capture. And in a final letter posted on Deep Capture after the sale of his stake in Overstock, Patrick Byrne addresses his erstwhile teammates, citing the actual reasons for his departure. You think me controversial now, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I know enough to fry the deep state to ashes. The deep state and the oligarchy are entwined and they won't die quietly. There is going to be an enormous amount of return fire directed at me. The blather of the hedge fund chogis and the financial press against Overstock since I came forward is a manifestation of that. With me no longer an executive, a board member, or even a shareholder, it becomes pointless for them to try to get to me that way. There are other ways that they will come for me but there is no edge for them to come through Overstock to do it. For these reasons, it may give you some comfort to know what I am doing with the capital generated by the sale of the stock. After paying tens of millions in taxes by Friday, the rest will be in investments that are counter-cyclical to the economy. Gold, silver, and two flavors of crypto. These acts accomplish two objectives. It provides a hedge for Overstock. If the economy craters and thus Overstock runs into tough times, those investments will soar and you will have access to capital if needed. In fact, you will have not just access to capital, you will have access to the friendliest capital imaginable, my own. If you see the US economy cratering, please do not lose the sleep you otherwise might. You will have a friend who has sunk almost his entire fortune into investments that will soar if a crisis occurs, and who knows your business well and who appreciates you. The other thing accomplished by the investment moves I described above is that my ammunition gets moved outside acts of retaliation from the deep state. That is important because, in fact, I am now going to shellac them. Actually, shellac is too weak of a word for what I intend to do to the deep state. Sit back and enjoy the show. Patrick Byrne's life, and especially the last few months, have all the makings of a political thriller. Many people have dismissed him as a madman, an eccentric CEO who doesn't know what battles to pick, and what ones to just leave alone. And I don't think this is going to be the last video that I end up making on him. He's aligned himself with being ahead of the curve every step of the way from launching one of the first e-commerce companies to incubating one of the first blockchain startups and being one of the first major public companies to accept Bitcoin as a form of currency. 
So whether you believe his claims about his knowledge of the deep state or not, there's enough evidence out there that Byrne is a man of his word. He's been as accurate in his predictions of the future as the ability he's had to change it. Fractionally reserved, Keynesian multiplied, magic money tree financial system we live in is seeing its last days. I think it's all gonna crash and they're just keeping it. I think that what we are really in the act of doing, we have the crypto world, you and I, are building what's gonna be a, a warm standby for, for civilization itself. So when the, the, when the systems were on fail, the central banking and the, and the, and the debt-based money and Keynesianism, when they all fail, we, civilization won't be over. We will have this warm standby. We'll do a hot swap using geek language. We'll do a hot swap to these other systems. We'll have a functioning capital market. We'll have a functioning central bank, we'll have blockchain central bank, we'll have functioning voting systems. In fact, I mean, all this stuff will be built. I feel like I'm in a race against time. I've got like, I don't know, what do we have? How, a couple years before the system as we know it starts buckling? Uh, that feels about right. Well, if we can have two years before the system, before we have another 08, we can, with two years, we can build functioning standby systems that will be in a position to hot swap with the, uh, the DTCC and other places when they crash. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on Patrick Byrne. I hope you guys found it interesting. I definitely had a blast researching him. It took me quite a few weeks to actually compile all this stuff together in a bit of a video format. Um, I've included a ton of links down below if you want to hear more about his personal philosophies. He's done a ton of long form interviews where he really gets in deep about his view on economics and things like the blockchain and, and where he sees that going in the future. So thanks again so much for watching this video. If you want to support more content like this, just like, comment, and be sure to subscribe on this channel for more regular updates and notifications when I put them out there. Um, if you want to donate, I am taking BAT tokens through the Brave web browser. If you don't know about it, come check out some of my other videos on it. Um, it's actually been a great way to raise money outside of Patreon and being able to monetize on YouTube, which I'm not allowed yet. I gotta get more videos out there, clearly. Um, but yeah, again, thanks so much for all you guys do for supporting this channel, watching this video, and I'll be back next week with some more regular crypto news for you guys all to sink your teeth into. Awesome. Have a great rest of your day.